We are a family of six who call the ocean our home. We feel incredibly blessed to be doing this life together as a young family, embracing the ups and downs of what is a life at sea. This is our floating home, Happy Days, and you are invited to follow along as we share this incredible adventure. Have a laugh and be inspired to pursue a life less ordinary. Click the subscribe button to keep up to date as we see where this journey takes us. So if we do topside starting tomorrow, yeah? I think yeah, yeah, yeah. Topside, topsides. Okay, and then bottom paint. Well, I'll do that last. In this episode, we roll up the sleeves and do the last minute bits before we splash happy days. Once we confirm she floats, hooray, we turn our attention to the in-water bits. And there's a few surprises along the way, but we persevere and set sail into the sunset. Good, what have you been doing? You show me. I have been cleaning this part here from the cleats down there. All the way. Nice and thick, eh? Oh, I haven't even got my brush dirty yet because I've been organising the crew. And they're already done, we're well, just about. Go team, not your first rodeo, is it? So, we are doing some work on happy days, we're in the yard, and uh, we're trying to, we've got some gel coat cracks that we're trying to touch up. Uh, I've actually got the legend that is Pancho, uh, who is sort of like the foreman of the yard. He jumped in, in, in the van with us and we went to the paint shop and they were there for about 20 minutes, uh, sort of toiling away, making us up a batch of gel coat to then say, um, we don't have any gel coat. I was like, what's going on? And it turns out that in Spanish, uh, they didn't have any pigmentation to put in the gel coat. So Pancho is like, don't worry about it, just come to my house, I've got some. So we're at his house, he's ducked in, and I believe when people have finished with you know, bits and pieces on their yacht, if they're gonna throw them out, he says, oh, don't throw them out, I'll take them home. So he's got things like 5200, um, and some gel coat, hopefully. You only need the smallest amount, but you, know, you either have it or you don't, which means you can either do it or you can't. So very, very generous of him. Anyway, that's a uh, small insight as to getting stuff done. So I've been on a wild goose chase, uh, trying to find gel coat to do the top sides. And uh, I left and, and the team was halfway through the port hull, come back and they're done. I haven't even touched a roll. I'm not necessarily proud of that, but more, more so a uh, huge effort team. I know, I know you know how to roll the boat. How much have we used, team? Oh, so our, our amount was right? Yeah. So we'll be able to go around with this, uh, another waterline if we want to. Yeah, we will. Yep. Uh, and we still got to do jack stands, yeah?
Yeah, mate, that'd be awesome. Let's do it. What did we just learn, Ted? Uh, that our bottom of our keel has just flattened out. You've got to crack a bit from that. The first time we went to uh, went to Splash, where there isn't wood, point to it, Ted. We had a a small a small crack that we went. Okay, let's 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 hold, fix it properly, glass it in. Originally, I was gonna just do some epoxy filler, anti-foul, and deal with it next time. But instead, we put the boat back down, fiberglassed it, then all. <laughs> then things went very pear-shaped uh, with pips, and we've got broken bones and everything else. And now, we're splashing tomorrow, about eight or nine days after all of that. And I've just come down to anti-foul this bit here. Uh, and we can see a crack right at the end here that's flattened out. So, I've got some glassing to do. Hoping we can just go on the slings overnight, and splash tomorrow, and get us off the heart. I'm not sure if it's these stands that are that are sort of sinking in under the weight, or if it's, there's six of us on board living on it. There's, these keels are sacrificial, but at the same time, they shouldn't be doing this. So. <laughs> Just a uh, quick fiberglass job, bro. All in a day's work. Something to journal about tomorrow. Doing a fine job. Getting it done. After a few weeks on the hard, and a couple of broken bones. It was finally time to splash. Engine on. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you happy? Port Open Esco is ultimately a fishing port which has now become a commercial port for tour operators too. There are 5 metre tides and limited space for private vessels, but the guys at Frederico's Fishing Charters helped us out. We've done it! Yay! We've done it! <laughs> we are on the water. Big thumbs up. After running for 20 minutes, we've got oil pressure that looks like that. The temperature is borderline on the hot side. Right, getting out. <laughs> Archie came running in. It's something we've never seen before. <laughs> and now Pips yeah. want to see. Where did it go? Uh, that way. That way. It was huge, bigger than that. Yeah, that's big whiskers. Yeah, that's a long one. Did you spot him again, Archie? Oh, I see. That's why that's under the waterline. Yep. Okay. Because I've utilised the plumbing that was already in place. Correct. I got one filter off. It stunk really, really bad. It smells so bad. Ugh. <laughs> 
No, the stinky one. Can I just confirm if it's salt or fresh? No, I can smell it. It's definitely salt. Only salt water smells like that after it's been fishing. Another steamy hot morning here in Panasco. But an exciting morning, it's really calm out here and it's time to put the head sail on. So let's get into it. This has slept with Ted on his bed the whole time we've been on the hard. He's so excited to put it on. <laughs> It's white. <laughs> We've got the Navy boys doing their morning swim this morning, doing their training in the gross harbour. And Pips, she's watching, trying to find the shady spot. It's pretty hot. Yeah, you're still in the sun. Look at your shadow. Oh, do you want to sit on the other side of the boat? No? Yeah, oh, it is. It's not allowed. Oh, I know. Because we we're trying to commission the water maker, and we got a bit stuck yesterday. And these live in where the water maker is, in the um, in there, the starboard forepeak. So that's why they're all out. mistakes can happen to anyone <laughs> but we've just completely done it wrong <laughs> and took all of our line off the furler before we put the sail up so we have no way of furling it lucky there's still no no breeze or not much breeze Looking forward to heading that way in the near future. How's it, Captain? Awesome! Doing well. Doing well. <laughs> so, we've been uh, attempting to recommission our water maker for the last few days. Uh, we've got it working, we've got it, uh, our high pressure gauge isn't reading which is not ideal because you don't want to go too high pressure and, and blow up the pump. But we have it going through sort of a hybrid solution at the moment. But the water quality is, is, is not drinkable. It's, uh, it's, a, it's about 520 TDS, it should be 200 or below. So after some research and googling and whatnot we believe it's the membrane inside the reverse osmosis system uh, and that is definitely something for us not to do so uh, the positive to the poor quality water that comes out of the tap here in Panasco is 
uh, desalination plants aren't unusual. So we've got uh, a lovely chap on board who is helping us change out the membrane uh, and then we'll run the water maker and hopefully get good quality water despite being in hot, yuck, hard water. The RO membrane, the reverse osmosis membrane should still make it happen. So we have probably today worth of drinking water left and then we would, let's just hope it gets going. We need drinking water. Here he is. So here's our membrane casing. That's probably not the right word, but a new membrane to go inside it. <laughs> the end. So that's the inside of the membrane. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Turns out that BW actually stands for brackish water, not SW for salt water. Yeah, it was the wrong membrane, and yeah, it didn't work. And yes, we had to install a whole new one again. Okay, so we are now reinstalling the membrane, and we just about dropped a, dropped a piece in the drink. Thankfully, it landed down at the forepeak. That would not have been good. put into the water maker and we ran it for about five minutes and now the generator's dead. So just go out and check if Chris is checking the impeller. We think that might be the problem. What was that? Okay so it's not the sea strainer, it's not the impeller. Yeah but the sea temperature is 33 degrees. The, the infrared there? Uh, yes, Bells, it's just here in the tool set. Troubleshooting time. Alright, so the new membrane is just turned off and it's got SW for salt water C64040. Okay, we're at 58 PSI. Inlet pressure. 403. Making water. We're just researching, lapping the <laughs> cone clutch. But this is this is the vibes here. It's party time for most of the population in Tenasco. <laughs> Being a Saturday. We're just researching lapping the <laughs> cone clutch. It's at this point we should probably bring you up to speed. You know earlier how we had the wrong membrane? Well, we did run out of water. So we had to move closer to land so a water truck with a big long hose could fill up our tanks. And as we were heading back into our slip, we lost reverse in our starboard side, which for those who have ever moved to Catamaran, makes things very, very difficult. So, another project added to the list. We're getting to know the soundtrack pretty quickly, aren't we? It's my favourite. This, this my one? Favorite. This is your favourite song of the soundtrack? I like it, it's pretty cool. Mexican banger. <laughs> High bolts, screwdriver, out comes the cone clutch assembly. This is the complete SD40 or SD50 cone clutch assembly. Thank you, YouTube. This is when Shona's in her element. I love doing this. Oh, it's like a big jigsaw puzzle. I do not. In, I'm happy to crank on wrenches and whatnot. Uh, but I get a bit, almost a bit panicky with all the detail. Shona's just awesome. Okay, so there's supposed to be two shins here? I don't know. Well, yeah, there's two there. Yeah, sweet. Okay, so I believe this is, is what the... we need to lap. Lines the whole way around, the whole way to top and bottom. 
Would you agree? Yeah. yeah. It's a reassemble day. Putting the jigsaw puzzle back together. Shout out to uh, Parle. Uh, we've been watching your vid as, as well as reading the instructions, as well as using all the brain thrust. <laughs> um, we need to get this right. Yeah. Can you see the sweat on her face? <laughs> How do we go, team? We did it. We learnt how to lap a clone catch, cone clap, I can't even say it. We learn how to lap it, just know how to say it. I'm, I'm actually not sure, uh, feel free to educate us accordingly, but uh, yeah. the CC. We did it, we did it. Yeah, we can go on the reverse. The boat has reverse. Oh man. Both engines on. We are underway. We just stopped off, didn't we, Dad? Yeah, we're on the way and we're getting out of the marina. First night passage, well, first big passage we have done on Happy Days. And that's a nighttime one, isn't it, Chip? Yep. We're off, and we're off. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> Into the sunset we go. Join us next time as we begin life on the hook. After nearly four months of getting our boat in working order, we can finally enjoy the lifestyle we know and love. Come along and explore the Sea of Cortez with us. Hot.